But it's glad to hear, I'm glad everyone's here. Uh, episode 89 of the Town Hall Academy. We're going to talk four, five, six days a week. You decide. These guys got a ton of things to share with our audience since they're very well established. Uh, shop owners and uh, they've some of them have probably thought to go to four some of them in fact Tom's at four and he wonders how he gets it done and um, and then you know six six works for 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 two of you guys and uh, I want to thank Jasper so much for their support in addition to the strict quality remanufacturing steps they take at Jasper they can actually improve a drivetrain's component original design so that it runs longer and better than when it was new. Check out their featured engine and transmission pages at jasperengines.com. So great to have Bill Nalo from Interstate Auto Care, Madison Heights, Michigan with us. Say hi, Bill. Hi, everybody. Tom yes. Pipo, Tri-County Motors from Rudland, Michigan. Tom. Hey, everybody. And Tom is off today because he's a four-day a weeker. Um, some great hey, honors. Weekend. Yeah, it's your, it's your long weekend. Three times recognized ASE Technician of the Year. Congrats on that, as always. And Alan Ali Galfan, German Car Depot, Hollywood, Florida. Yeah, we, we're here. We got you. Great. Okay, cool. All right, guys. It, it's, uh, it, it's so interesting. Um, I, I interview uh, tons of aftermarket service professionals, and um, we don't necessarily get into the, the days that they're open. Uh, I usually know about it, but we don't hammer that home too hard. But a couple of the guys that have been open four days, I think I've always challenged them. Uh, and, and it was Greg Skolnick, one of the first guys back maybe three years ago. Yeah, I'm open four days. And you, you know what he says? I know I can make more money. I know I can do more volume. But this is where we sit in our mindset, in our culture. Uh, I'm not wearing out our people. And part of one of his strategies and rules were for his four day a weeker. And Greg, I hope I get this right. He says, you can't, you, you can't do any side work. You can't take that Friday and, 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 and earn. I want you to spend time with your family and do things, you know, have lunch with the wife, have a hobby. And, um, and, and he, he just loves it and he won't change. Now, Tom, I really want to start with you. Uh, one of the things you told me was, oh, my God, a, a three-day weekend every weekend. How do you get up for it on Monday morning? <laughs> well, that is an issue with some of the texts I found out. You know, they, you know like taking a week off uh, on vacation, you come back to work that first Monday. You're just kind of dragging. You wonder where you left off. It's hard to pick up the pieces and get rolling again. And that is a little bit of an issue when you do it week after week. I mean, you think you can get used to it, but... Three days off, uh, you know, you guys that only have a day, day and a half off between jobs, you can pick it up and roll with it a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, it, it is an issue. So on Monday, are the bays full at seven in the morning? Um, they try to be, which is another issue. Uh, <laughs> getting uh, customers to want to do early drop-offs or drop-offs the night before. Um, but with our culture in our little town here, we have some fleet accounts we have a fleet manager that gets up at 3 a.m., so 7 o'clock is his lunch break, brings the vehicles down, and uh, you know, we get going right away. Got it. Well, you know, Bill, you're a six-day-a-weeker. Tough to find techs today. I mean, is there a, a groundswell from techs who just want to work five, or have they accepted that if sometimes they've got to work six? Well, uh, let me confess first here is that I'm really not tied to one way or another, uh, but coming from – this, the fact that I'm an immigrant and the fact that my brother and I worked a year and a half, seven days a week straight, 18 hour days, that's what it took for us to get here. Does it have to be for the rest of our lives? No. And I think that's what we're going to be talking about for the rest of the hour is what are, what's your personal preference? And by the way, what's the preference of the customers? Are you able to, to bridge the gap? Uh, in, in a, you know, can, you, can you have a four day business? Uh, when when we're living seven day lives, um, and then there's this thing called time. That's the most valuable thing in the universe. How do we make the most of it in 24 hours, personally, professionally? That's what I'm hoping we're going to discuss. So I, I'm 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 open. I'm all I'm open. I've, I've been open. I've I, I've mentioned to my guys. I said, any this is our shop. This isn't my shop. I'm just the caretaker. I'm just the guy that makes sure that we're doing things the right way. You guys tell me what you want. And Bill, if you, if you put it up for a vote right now, private ballot, what would they pick? 
they, we've tried. I said, I said, I think we should go to a five-day work week because forever and a day, it's, it's no, uh, no secret. We've had a hell of a time finding that fourth tech that's going to work within, within the framework of, of our, our, our culture. And, um, and so the guys want to work Saturdays because sometimes they like to have a Wednesday off or a Tuesday off. And we're just, we're flexible. I've got situations where the guys will say, you know what? I've got my daughter's uh, dance recital tomorrow at school at 10 o'clock. Can I come in? And I said, come in at noon, you know, we don't. And, and, and that's how we've worked it. And there's sometimes they're working 50 hours. Sometimes they're working 40. Sometimes they're working 60. So you've used Saturday to allow that flexibility in your people's life. They, they, they don't have to put in six days is what you're telling me. I, I'm willing to have them work four days, but we have, a seven day, a, we have a seven day life that customers have to, uh, to live. And so, and so I guess my, my, this is my argument for working whatever days we wanna work is, can we work a four, four 10 hour shifts? Can you have a, a crew where some guys wanna work four 10 hour shifts, others wanna work a five day? You've got a guy that, that isn't married, doesn't have kids. He's just, you know, all in as far as wanting to work as many hours as possible. He might want to work six days a week. Am I going to stand in his way? Now, as a 53-year-old, I'm going to say, you don't want to do this forever. You don't want to live for, for work. But who am I to say that to somebody? I did it, right? Yeah, you know, Ali, uh, Bill brings up a great point. You, you were telling me, listen, if I could just find two more techs, I'm open six days a week, you could probably give these guys four 10-hour shifts. Yeah, well, I did an interesting, interesting experiment. And I put it, some, I always have running ads for techs. I'm always going around other shops and giving cards out. Uh, the Volkswagen I training center is close to us. I shouldn't do it, but I put cards on their guys' cards that are going to school. Um, the thing about it is, is I put an ad in, uh, I knew about the show, so I, I put an ad in uh, Craigslist, which seems to be in South Florida, a very good way to hire. Zip Recruiter kind of gets some higher end guys, um, haven't had much success. I think I hired my service advisor uh, off of Zip Recruiter. But I mean, I have a fairly large budget, I think for a, a, you know, a shop of my size, uh, for a five guy shop. and. Uh, I'm spending six, seven hundred dollars a month on ads always for trying to recruit, going places trying to recruit. Uh, I have things where I'll give uh, rewards to somebody who refers me, thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars I had for a BMW mechanic. And the ads that I put in, I wrote four day work week, open five days, four day work week, uh, eight o'clock to five thirty, four days a week. I got tons of response. And I didn't actually hire anybody off of it, but I will tell you one thing, putting that in the ad got a third, if not a half more responses. It's got 25 or 30 responses of real people. I'm not talking about junk, but real people. Uh, hired one guy, uh, he loved it. He was a young guy, he just moved here and uh, he wanted to work. I have a base plus commission, so for every five hours I may earn more money per hour. He wanted to work six days a week and uh, he was working out okay. And unfortunately I uh, had some family issues and moved to Orlando. So some lucky shop in Orlando is going to get him actually a Volkswagen dealership. Uh, and, and that was the issue. Most of my guys have been with me for a very long time. Now when my one guy who's, who's been with me for 20 years, he worked you know, five days a week. We're open on Saturdays and everybody works Saturdays. We never rotated. The guys who wanted to work Saturdays, because we do 20 to 25% of our business on a Saturday. So we'll do six to $8,000, $9,000 on a, in a good part of the year, eight, 9,000, six to 7,000 a day on, on a, on a normal, you know, time. So the guys can turn a lot of hours and they make a lot more money on a Saturday. The guys who are older, they don't want to mess with Saturdays. So we wrote, you know, we can try to rotate them out a little bit. Um, when I go to hire a person, I say to them, listen, uh, I'm trying to find an A tech right now, you know, a great tech. And uh, I'll give them whatever they want. They don't have to be on base plus commission. They'd be on street salary. Uh, I just tell them it's a three-month probationary period. Um, would I want to be open? I, I always want to be open six days a week, but I wish my guys would only work four days a week. That would be ultimate for me. I can handle the service writing. 
service writers that's working four days a week, but the techs, I need to produce 160 hours a week minimum to make a great living. And unfortunately, I don't have a bunch of techs that can turn 50 hours, 45 hours, you know? So uh, that it all depends on me. It all depends on how many techs I can hire. I'm not greedy, so I don't mind if we turn to 155, 150 hours uh, a week, but I don't have that super tech. And I know what other people are saying, well, you've got to set your shop up so the guys can, can succeed and turn the hours they need to turn. Well, we do that. We, we put the cars for the next day in their bay and out in a close by parking spot. So the next day they're ready to go. And, and the smart guys will come in at eight o'clock. Their office opens at eight. We started at 830. The smart guys come in at 8.15, 8 o'clock, and Cherry picked the great jobs. And he turns 45, 50 hours a week, my one gentleman. <laughs> He's young. He's in his late 20s. He wants to work six days a week. He wants to work after work. And he knows he'll get burnt out on it. Like right now, he's on vacation and uh, he's taking two weeks off. We're super slammed and busy, but I gave him the two weeks off. He says, hey, Alan, I'll, I'll not take my vacation. Um, I will put it off. Well, this kid hasn't seen his parents in 10 years. And he's going out of the country to see him. I said, what are you, crazy? But that's the kind of loyalty you build by taking care of your, your employees and giving them benefits yeah. and giving them dollars. It, it's a great strategy, Bill. I want to go to you because you're a six-dayer like Ollie is. Did you ever think about putting the ad in to say, I, I really only want to work you four, even though I'm open six? Well, the last ad that we ran was that we, no, we didn't lose anybody. We haven't. Knock on wood, I haven't lost anybody. What we're looking to do is to convert a six-day shop into four or five-day pieces. And so to the extent that we could get, you know, two and a half service riders doing six days, you know, running a six-day shop and a, a crew of maybe four to six guys in the back room, each one of them at, at 100% uh, uh, productivity, uh, that sixth day, this is the one thing that, that I think um, – for all of us that have been doing this for this long, you know, it's easy. Again, it's easy for us to say, you know, for the first half hour, you know, I just want to be an advocate for the six day shop. And then you'll see, I'll just, I'll, I'll flip it. Cause it, it really isn't. So, you know, you've got to outrun your, um, your expenses. You know, the, the, the amount of rent that you pay for this building is based on, you know, 30 to 31 days a month. So to the extent that you have more production days, allows you to be able to uh, out, outrun your expenses faster. And so does that mean that, you know, you can make two or three more days of profit? You know, that it, it, a lot of us don't realize that you really don't make any money until that last week of that month. You know, your overhead is eating up 75 to 80% of your expense, uh, of, your, of your income. And so that last week, that those five, six, seven, 10 days mean everything because the more you can squeeze out in production, Guys, uh, the more money let, everybody makes. Let, let me ask a question about efficiency and productivity of the tech. You know, if, if, if you're having a bad week or two, sure, you wish you had more days in the month. But if you're really humming and really, you know, well-tuned, you could probably do it on a few less days, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no excuse. I, I can't give you an excuse in, in saying we can't do what we do now in five days. If you If you had a gun to my head and said you're going to do – this in four days, we do it in four days. You know, anybody with a gun to their head is going to do it. Why we do it with six days? I don't know. I come from a seven day a week, you know, shell business, you know, that we ran all those years. Yeah, so, so one less day was a vacation for you. That'll never change. You know, that'll never change for me. It, it, okay. Let, let's talk about the value of day six, Saturday. What, what does Saturday really mean to the next week? Anybody want to go first? Yeah, that means your merchant account is going to get loaded up with a lot more cash on Monday. See, a lot of times, uh, as far as cash flow goes, a lot of times with our business, uh, we're lucky if we collect on cars from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even Friday, uh, until late, maybe Friday. So you're talking about, you know, twenty-five dollars or $30,000, plus the money you've laid out for all the other jobs that you've got in the shop. So we're talking about fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars. We do a lot of big jobs. We are a German-only car shop, and uh, 
we lay out a lot of money and as much as we try to get deposits from customers, you know, we try as hard as we can. I have two service advisors. I want to knock them over the head sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, we've got some gigantic jobs that screws your parts to labor ratio off because the engine costs a lot. You don't make a ton on it. Um, but quite, it's a fairly simple job installing the engine, very time consuming, but fairly simple. I've got one gentleman uh, who just knocks stuff out. He's the one who, who knocks out of the ballpark everybody. He's always over 40 hours. And it, the funny part about it is uh, Tom Ham once said to me, you know, some guys, it's more important. There's two mentalities. They think more about how much they make or they, they want more private time. So you've got different mentalities. This gentleman I'm talking about right now, his name is Milton. He's, he took his first vacation in a couple of years and it, he gets two weeks paid vacation. And, uh, I'd rather not pay him the money for and not take his vacation. I'd rather have him take the vacation. So uh, the, 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 the six day a week for me, it, we're, the, we're one of the few German specialty shops that are open six days a week. And our Saturdays are very busy. Now, if we do too many oil changes on too many new cars, that'll ruin that number. I mean, the number will get killed. So we're, very precise okay. in our so, schedule. So, so, Ollie, let me, let, me, let me challenge your thinking on that. Mm -hmm. Those, they, they love you. You're a German specialty shop. They want to be there. If you were open five and you could do all the same amount of money in five, uh, would those people bring their oil changes during the week or would it really hurt you from getting these really big jobs done? Um, I don't think it hurt the big jobs as much, but... Because Saturdays, we don't really do anything. We don't dive into diagnostics deep. We don't uh, do any big, big jobs on Saturdays. So Saturday's a pickup day. Saturday is a day for future recommendations because we always get too many oil changes. But uh, quite honestly, when we schedule, we try to make sure that we don't make available a person who's got a two- or three-year-old car under lease uh, or a person that's got really low, you know, under 15,000, 20,000 miles on their car to come in on a Saturday. I mean, we do have to do that. Don't get me wrong. But we try in my marketing and with my guys who answer the phone to talk those people into another day. We'd rather give them a ride to work. We actually, we actually also have six loaner cars in South Florida. That's kind of rare for independent. We have six loaner cars, which we never have enough of. And then once you give a person a loaner car, they expect it every time for the littlest repair. Uh, but I would love to be open five days a week not be open Saturday. Sure. It would be wonderful. Uh, as soon as you guys can figure out a way as we talk every week on this show, just about, and look at everybody talking about it, uh, find and get more technicians, uh, until I can turn that 160 hours a week with what I've got. Uh, I'm fine. I'm more than happy to pay another technician really, really well. I'm, I don't know what other people pay their technicians, but these guys, if they turn their 40 something hours, they're making 30 bucks an hour, which is good. They're getting health insurance. We're matching them 2% on, the, on, their, uh, on their 401ks. What more can I do for them? You know, one guy would make a special exception. He has to pick his kid up a couple of days a week. So he leaves at 4.30. Fine, I don't mind. Yeah, uh, this, is the, um, this is the thing that I, I think we're missing on this, is Saturdays for us, a lot of times people say, well, you guys actually, you know, fix cars on Saturday. Well, yeah, we fix cars on Saturday. But when we don't have the parts or when we don't have the time, we're staging them for, Tuesday, for Monday and Tuesday. Where do you think we get our why – do, why do you think that some shops that are open six days don't have car count problems? Is because that Monday and Tuesday is fed by, by that Saturday business. And, you know, can you bridge the gap and, and – and go five days, of course you can, yeah. You've got a whole fleet of loaner cars out there. You say to the customer, you know, you can drop off your car on a Saturday. You don't even have to be open. You can drop off your car on a Saturday. Our lockbox can have two or three vehicles in them. They could fill out the paperwork uh, digitally or, or, or mail the, the, the rental car agreement. Take the vehicle and, and go. So this is not a situation where we say that you know, we, we, uh, we have to be open six days because the, the business has to survive. And I think maybe you tell me if you agree with this, Ali, my business doesn't, wouldn't somehow disintegrate if I, we somehow jumped off of six days or four, five days. It's just that somehow you found a, a niche for yourself and the niche, like I'll just give you an example to, to its extreme. When I was a shell dealer, we were open seven days. 
we were open seven days and we did full service seven days a week. I mean, we had parts, we were doing a timing belt job on a Sunday. And so we'd had people driving from, we had a towing business. And so we ran a, a seven day business. It was my brother and I, we had three full-time techs and it was insane. It was crazy. You but we take blood pressure kids. medication now? No, no. <laughs> I, I'm having more fun than ever before. But the, the point is, is there's no, there weren't kids and it was all about building this thing. And so at some point, once we built it to wherever we think it's built, now comes the, the, the father time come along and says, okay, here it is now. In your, hopefully in your wise years, can you slow it the hell down a little bit here? How much more money do you need here? So if this sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, that's precisely what this, this conversation is all about. Yeah, I, and, I, and I really appreciate that. You know, how many times has a customer said that a new vehicle may look and smell nice, but the reality is they come with seemingly endless monthly payments, higher license fees, higher insurance premiums, and an incredible depreciation when you pull it off the lot. Well, the better solution, remanufactured components from Jasper means a new lease on life for your customer's trusted old friend. Thank you to Jasper for bringing the Town Hall Academy free to the automotive aftermarket each and every week. Tom, um, you're the uh, odd man out. So interesting. Yes, I you know, am. Here, here's Ollie who loves his six, Bill who's six, but with I don't Bill love my six. Huh? Stop. Oh. I don't love my six. You don't, all right. Okay. All I'll right. do five, but <laughs> five all needs right. some more text. I got to get you two more texts. And, and Tom, what's good about your, your life and your business as a four day week shop? Well, I'm listening to you guys talk about your Saturdays and, and uh, you know, getting all this stuff done. And I'm thinking, geez, my Saturdays, I'm out hiking in the woods. I'm uh, attending my campfire out of the campsite. I'm chilling up my garden. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm enjoying life. Um, I've been doing four days for uh, 12 years since 2006. Um, a little bit tough to get the customers on board at first, but in my unique ex position, um, I don't have much competition here. The, the next shop is maybe 20 miles. Um, I've had a loyal following. It used to be if I wanted to take a week's vacation, I would just close up the shop. I'd take off. You know, we'd go out to Apex and SEMA and we'd take a, a, an extra four or five days and tour the desert and come back a week, week and a half later. And my customers were waiting for me. They were waiting with flat tires that they never took anywhere else to get fixed. I mean, I had this loyal following and it, life was great. And they said, boy, I couldn't wait till you got back because you're the guy for us. Um, that being said, I mean, I know you guys are in the metro areas and if you're not going to do it, somebody else down the street's going to do it. And if your price is too high, they're going to go down the street. Um, I don't think I'm overpriced, but I think I've, I've got a good value for all my customers. Um, some of the guys that run shops that are not, you know, they're, they're just uh, maybe running out of the garage behind their house or something. Now, Michigan's got some repair laws. They have to be registered and all that, and some of them are. But they don't have a lot of overhead, so they don't charge a lot. So um, I'll take it to the fellow in my church, and he's going to put brakes on for 100 bucks. Well, that's fine, but, you know, for those people who need a full-service garage like ours, um, they keep coming around. I mean, they, they've learned that we're open at 7 a.m. and they really enjoy that. Uh, say they go to work at 8, so they pop in at quarter after 7 or 7.30 and we can have a conversation. We can go for a test drive together, uh, really talk about their, their vehicle a little bit instead of reading the envelope in the drop box. You know, how much information does that give you? You're lucky to get a signature sometimes. Approximately um, how many cars a day do you do on a weekday? Oh dear, we do 160 a month in 16 days, so a 10 a day. And I have two texts myself in the shop. I have a service writer, and I'm between the service writer and the text all day. So I turn a few hours myself, but not, not a lot. Um, our ARO is lower than some, higher than others. We, we're on about four, 425 on an ARO. And you're in the country. Uh, how many people in your town? Our town sports about 500 people. Oh. Yeah, it's, my, when I say small town, you guys think small town is 20,000. No. Uh, well, so our, our part stores, our closest part store is eight miles away, but we get hot shot deliveries from Sault Ste. Marie, 20 miles out. But, you know, customers don't come that far. So my okay. customers are mostly local. You have conditioned your customers. Bill, Ollie, yeah. can you condition your customers? We have conditioned our customers. Uh, now we're up to, a, I want to say a little bit over 50% appointments. Uh, we used to be virtually none. Uh, of that 50%, I could say 20% of that's emergency stuff. 
Uh, so we're probably more like 70% appointments, except for the emergency gym. So uh, 100% appointments for us. Right. So you're lucky about that. But the problem is in our block, there's, if you drive to my shop, I'm off, I'm off a side street. Um, you're going to go by at least from I-95. We're about two miles off there. You're going to go by at least 15, 20 shops. Oh, wow. Um, they're less money than us. We're to the higher side, but we get it right very often. As you can see, our reviews of 1,800 of them and, we have our share of, of non, you know, we have a small, very small quantity of low quality reviews. Um, and, and of those low quality reviews, a lot of them are bitching about price. We're the dealer alternative. So the dealers by us are open on Saturdays and Rick Case is open on Sundays, okay? For most of all their brands. And it's a skeleton crew there, but we can get parts from Worldpack, IMC, Northside. Your dealership alternative. There you go. So we can get we can get literally every day of the week at least fifteen runs a day of parts companies. Okay, World Packs four times a day, and they're located uh, their they're Hollywood stores five miles from us. Their Fort Lauderdale stores about ten miles from us. So one of our runners, car wash guys, can get parts. So okay. parts is not an issue. Uh, you know, there's always somebody working nights at my shop too. I mean, the young guys, not old. There's always somebody turning up, putting an engine in, doing a head at night. They make extra cash for that. Ollie, Bill, let me ask you both a question because I think you guys are numbers guys. Have you ever actually just quietly one day sat down in the office for a few hours and tried to figure out via a spreadsheet or a yellow pad how a five-day a week business would look? Have you ever done the math, what you'd have to do? I was uh, I was told that there was going to be no math problems on this uh on this podcast. Oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so well, I, I couldn't survive because it'd be about 20 to 25% less business. Now, you, now some of those people would come on the weekdays, but you got to understand, I don't know what your new customer acquisition is like, but we get about 50 to 55 new customers a month. It's about 21% new customers. Can never beat it. Been trying for years yeah. to beat 21%. Can't do it. It's great. So, um, so, so on Saturdays is when the new customers come. And believe it or not, People all the time tell us this. They drive by our shop before they actually come to our shop. Oh, that's human and nature. our building is awesome. We have a, I built out a new building in 2006, totally spent too much money. And uh, now a lot of other shops around us have got nice waiting rooms and a nice shop and a beautiful looking building and parking lot. But people with high-end cars check you out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so Saturdays on average – on average, there's at least six or seven new customers that really, I don't think, would be able to come to us if we weren't open on Saturdays, just because of the reason they work every day. So granted, we get a lot of referral business and people like our reviews and somebody knows somebody. But um, nowadays with Yelp, if you can stay good on Yelp, you know, the sh if, a shop, if a shop's got 50 reviews or more on Yelp, and they're re reasonably recent, that shop's probably doing good customer service because it's the hardest thing on earth to do is to keep Yelp happy. And in South Florida, there's a lot of tech savvy people, even older people, they have Yelp on their phones and they know it's an extortion tool to make sure that they get what they want. They use that extra coupon they downloaded and want to add it with ours, our competitor's coupon. When BMW is doing this $79 oil change for a six cylinder, yeah. they want to use it in our shop. We take it, but, Saturday is an acquisition day for us a lot. It's a get acquainted. I, I would say there's one or two people that come by just to introduce themselves and, and want to want to talk to us about a problem with their car. So uh, I, I don't work Saturdays, but my guys, my two service advisors do. But I did work Saturdays for years. But at 54, I don't think I need to anymore. Okay. Have you ever thought about taking a Monday off instead of a Saturday? Myself or the shop? Well, Shopping. for the shop, it, it, to, to give you guys a, a five-day week. You know, choose a different day. Mondays are so packed, it's off the charts. Saturday, well, you know, it, it's something that would have to be looked at because, um, you know, we're so used to loading up Mondays and Tuesdays with the work we get on Saturdays because we don't do a lot of diag on Saturdays. So what we love is maintenance on Saturdays, and that's what we try to – push for we aren't always successful at it but we're not going to spend three or four hours on a diag on a car 
on a Saturday. It's just rarely, you know? Yeah. Go ahead, Bill. So, so we, we were on the Costco vendor network. We're a preferred vendor for Costco. And we are also the, there's, there's a Sam's club within a mile of us here. There's a discount tire. Um, what is their busiest day of the week? <laughs> Have you seen a Costco parking lot? Or Sam's Club parking lot, they're open on Saturdays. I mean, it's a zoo on Saturdays and Sundays. You can't go near the place. And so where do you think we get all of our new customers? Where do you think I get to not have to invest in Google AdWords and invest in all the advertising stuff that we do? We, we, we don't need to do advertising because we've got the folks coming in the door. Um, besides well, the fact, Bill, Bill, would they have done business with you if you were not open Saturday? Well, the, the problem is, is at the tire center. That's where the, Saturdays are a ridiculously busy day. So what we do is we'll book those appointments. And so what, what ends up happening is that that alignment comes in, turns out it needs, you know, 500 bucks with the front end work. Uh, we may not be able to get the parts today. And I hand them one of the loaner cars. And we just acquired a, a, a new client. We just converted a customer to a, a client. Um, forget about the dollars here. This is a typical interaction that happens on a Saturday because things are a little bit more dialed down. I had a lady with, a, with her daughter come in. She was a, a Costco referral, just a wonderful lady. She comes in. She, uh, I'm, I'm at the service counter just kind of doing some paperwork because it's a, a day that I can do some stuff on the side too. She plops down a can on, of pop on the counter and she says, and I'm like, what are you doing? She says, I'd like to pay you for this. I'm like, did you see a, a price tag on anything on the refrigerator? She says, well, no. I said, no, there's, there's no charge for this. She says, that's kind of odd. And then she walks away and comes back. She says, well, at least let me have some quarters for the, for, the vet, for, the, for the arcade machine. I look at her and I said, did you see a quarter slot in that arcade? She says, I get it. I get it. But when, what, my, what my point is, is Saturdays are a day where people, you're going to have more people waiting in the waiting room. And if you have the kind of waiting room that you've invested in, I know I haven't seen at Ollie's, but I've put a fair amount of money in ours. It's a living room. There's no, you wouldn't be able to tell it's an auto repair shop. So you can have a seat, there's Wi-Fi, and there's refreshments, and there's a, a loaner car, we'll Uber you wherever you want, you know. It's, it's, and then we have a mall down the street from us. So Saturdays are a day where people can, it's a different kind of customer walking in the door on the Saturday. Bill, Bill, Ollie says his business is 20 to 25% on Saturday. Have you ever calculated yours? Uh, our, our, it, so this is interesting. Uh, Non-holiday weekends, Saturdays are every bit as profitable as any other day of the week. You just can't measure it that way because the work isn't necessarily getting done on Saturday. It's feeding Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I can't stress okay. that enough. So, All right. Well, one more, one more thing. Are you working every Saturday, Bill? No, nah, not necessarily. No, no. How many there, Saturdays are you working? There's probably there's a couple of Saturdays uh, during the month is, is when I'll come in. But again, it's for, for me. So for me, is I'm having more fun than I've ever had before. Uh, would I like to do some, some hiking? Uh, what's, I can but the way I would answer uh, Tom is that I can do, if, if I just hired my replacement, I can do that without the business having to go to a five day work week. We can all work four days a week. Hell, I could work at two. Tom, Tom Ham is my, is my hero. He's, I don't even know when he's in Florida or not anymore. He should just get, get himself a Cessna and just fly back and forth. <laughs> now that's somebody I'd like to emulate. Does the business have to be a five day work week if I don't work in it one day a week? Can we just all go work on a four, four day work week? Hey, let's uh, let's plan to go visit Ollie. Yeah. Let's do a shop you know, tour Tom, at Ollie's. Tom, Tom, trip. Is my, uh, Tom is my hero too. Actually, in two thousand or seven or eight, him and Deb came to my shop and organized it, and they came there for like a couple of weeks. And uh, of course, I've blown all of the systems by then because we were the most profitable we ever were in our history of the business. Uh, when when he got me all set up, and it's and it's gone away a lot. It's my fault. Uh, but I throw stuff by him all the time and uh, you know, he's, everybody's got the same problems finding texts and that's what these shows are all about. I watch your shows all the time and you know, I have a friend of mine, a uh, fairly decent friend. He's got a shop that has a uh, 14 or 15 guys. He, I don't know. I do uh, every two weeks with interstate 20 batteries, 22 batteries. He does 90 batteries every two weeks. This guy is a very busy shop. People bitch that their cars are there for two and three weeks. He's got the gift of gab. The man is 84 years old. He drives from Boca Raton 
to Hollywood every single day with his son in a separate car. And they're open the shop at seven in the morning. He's been doing that for 45 or 50 years. It's just in him. You know, why is my doctor still a doctor? He's loaded. You still need to be a doctor at 70 something years old, seeing patients all the time. No, but that's all they know. So I love to be able to give my guys four day weeks because in South Florida, there's lots of stuff to do down here. Now the question here, Carm, is the, sh- is it the shop being open five days a week or the shop being open six days a week or the shop being open four days a week or the techs and the service providers working less or more? Definitely. Uh, if you, I could convey the message in, a, in, in uh, if I could talk to the person who looks at my ad, uh, Tom Ham says something, you know, they look at my shop and they see we're open on Saturdays and a lot of guys who would maybe apply uh, don't apply because they see we're open on Saturdays. So, uh, you know, so basically uh, in my ads, I always write four day work week or I write five day work week or I write no Saturdays. I'm looking for an A tech, I write no Saturdays because that definitely turns off guys. But the dealerships down here, they got to work two Saturdays a month. Almost all the dealerships, the techs work two days a month. Now in a little area, like Tom's lucky, he's in a smaller area. You know, I'm sure your dealerships aren't open on Saturdays and Sundays, right? Uh, no, they're not. You know, but are they selling 700 to 1,000 cars a month? I don't know. No, they're not. You know, the, we have the world's largest Volkswagen dealership and the world's largest Audi dealership and the world's largest uh, Porsche dealership within 15 miles of us. Okay, so why can't I hire more guys? That's the question for me. And then I'll open four days a week and everybody will be much happier. My guys get so stressed out sometimes and, and uh, you know, they need that week, two-week vacation. You know, you, people get burnt out. And uh, I envy you in that you can be able to work. And Tom Ham, the same thing. He has his guys working four-day work week. He's open five, I guess, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you guys do it? I mean, I've, I have went to Ratchet Ranch show and watched uh, guys who have 15 shops, five shops, eight shops. They, to me, they must be magicians because they find techs. They pull them out of a hat. I think yeah. it's a full-time job for them to do that. Um, remember, I just mentioned that we should go down to Hollywood, Florida and have a shop tour. Well, we're, we are having a shop tour November 2nd in Las Vegas, uh, the last day of, the, uh, of, of Apex, uh, SEMA. And uh, I'm actually doing my live show from Frank's place. Uh, that will be at 9 a.m. or 12 Eastern, right? 9 a.m. Uh, and uh, our topic is going to be the value of shop tours. And I believe there could be a dozen people just hanging out while Frank is doing some shop tours, although I want Frank to be on the show. I think it's going to be a hoot. And if you are going to be there, look up Frank's European uh, Set Your GPS. He's got a beautiful shop. Yeah, I know he does. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, I did the, the live show from there last year, and, and he just made some really big enhancements and blew open a, a new door uh, in his place. The, the, it's, a, it's a great place. So, so he, here, here's a question, everyone. Uh, what are your hours during, you know, Tom, you're, you're four. What are your hours every day? Uh, 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. We do close noon to one for lunch. Uh, the guys figure they need a nap in the middle of a 10-hour day. Man, I love that. You just take care of your people. And, and that's the country life. Yes, yes. What, what day would, do you open? Uh, Monday through Thursday. Yep, Friday's, uh, you know, Thursday night's my first Friday night. I think in South Florida, people would, would die if they couldn't get their car fixed. Uh, well, I would not have a problem being open seven days if I could rotate my guys through it. The problem is my, my shop culture is me. People look for me. I've been here 40 years. It's a small town. Everybody's always known me. And they're afraid that if I'm not here, they won't be taken care of. You know, I've tried that before. I tried being open Saturdays way back. That's something Tom Ham taught me about a long time ago. He goes, Alan, you need to be upstairs in your shop. You have upstairs and downstairs. You need to be upstairs. You even move your office upstairs. Remove yourself from the people. Yeah. You get your work done. And I would say literally half my customers don't even know who I am. They know that Alan Ollie Gelfin owns the shop, but they don't know who I am. I can walk right past them. And at times, that's good. Yesterday, I walked up to a lady who was outside in the parking lot. She was really pissed. I could tell she was angry. She wasn't yelling or anything like that. She said, I, this is, I said, oh, can I help you? Because I text everybody an hour after they leave the shop. How is everything? Would you recommend us? And uh, she said, who are you? I go, I'm Alan. I'm the owner of the shop. And she goes, oh, Ollie, yeah. I go, yep, Alan and Ollie, same name. Long story short, she had a check engine light, and it came back three times. 
little did I know, because I was outside, that it happened last year, and then it happened like six months later, and then it happened now again, and they were totally unrelated. But I did schmooze her over. She was going to sell her car. She had an older Beetle, but perfect condition, a 30,000-mile 2005 car in wow. perfect condition. But she says, I did a spreadsheet. I spent five grand on this thing. I go over how long? She goes, well, since I bought it. I said, man, you're doing good. And uh, changed her around. Last night, she emailed me about seven at night. I always check my email. I emailed her back. Hey, listen, tomorrow I'm going to look into it. And uh, I called her this morning, and I totally chilled her out and calmed her down. She'll keep that car for another five years. But the thing about it is, it's, uh, it, it comes back to that great question. Like you said, you would be open seven days a week if you could find the text to do it and the, and the manpower to do it. But uh, until Carm figures it out, then um, we're stuck. Oh, the weight of the world happens to be on me. Okay, great. <laughs> Listen, this is the idea starter here. Maybe we can, maybe we can get a, a groundswell. Bill, what are your hours? Seven to six, Monday through Friday, and then uh, Saturdays eight to five. Oh wow, big day on Saturday, long day. And and Bill, it seems like the reason you're doing the eight to five is because of your relationship with the uh, the big box store. I mean, we're we're in Metro Detroit. We're like Ali, you know. I mean, it, this is a millions of people, you know, in 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 this metropolis, and. Um, you know, and, and it's fun. I mean, I, I had a, a Saturday, two Saturdays ago, customer of mine, I shouldn't say fun. It was actually, it was, it was heart-wrenching. A customer of ours, last time they were here before the remodel, took a picture of him and his wife. Our deal is if you fall asleep on our reclining couch, we take a picture of you and you go on our hollow shame. <laughs> um, so this time he comes in alone and his wife passed away, 50 years old. And it was unexpected. And so here's a situation when... Two men are just kind of sitting there, two, two fathers, two husbands, and we're having a conversation about what it must be like, well, what it is like to lose your spouse. Where do I go to have that kind of interaction? And so I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying myself in, in all these years. I'm enjoying myself more than I've ever enjoyed myself before. Hiking would be wonderful. It'd be fine. But I'm having just as much fun right now as I've ever had before. Um, and I'm not lying to myself. I mean, I, this is from the heart. Uh, the interactions that we have with these, with these customers. Am I working a little too much? Yeah, absolutely. But I have a plan. I hey, will be not. Tom Ham one day. Uh, very good. Well, yet guess what? Time is ticking here, Bill. Time Look, is... I'm open eight to five. Yes. Days a week, but the, the shop opens at eight thirty. We close from twelve to one for lunch, but. The shop, the office is open between 12 and 1. Yeah. But we have 24-hour pickup and drop-off, which we advertise very heavily. Lots of key lock boxes, lots of codes to the gate, and uh, a lot of people drop their cars off at night. Very, very convenient. Very, very convenient. Hey, I want to read a comment from Bambi, who's on with us. And she says, I have another shop owner here right now with us from Little Rock, Nigel from Nigel's Place. He says this four-day work week is brilliant because he can run four 10-hour days, then three 10-hour days, so he can almost double his money every week. <laughs> a four and a three, a four and a three. Uh, it's really good. What do you think of that? The, the, the life is happening at seven days a week. Where, where we want to engage like if- but, but, but Bill, it goes back, you, you've said that a couple of times and, and I embraced that in the beginning, but now I'm going to challenge you by saying, well, so do your people's lives happen for seven days a week and family and, and sports and time off and, you know, time to recharge. Yeah. No, nobody's saying that we all have to work seven days a week or six days a week right. or five days a week. We can work four days a week. Let's just pick, you know, let's rotate. What do hospitals do? I mean, does, does a hospital shut down? Are we not a hospital? Are we not a hospital for the transportation sector? We don't charge enough. Yeah, well, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other topic there, right? But, hey, every, hey, guys, I don't think we're going to actually come to a critical solution here or critical mass, but I think what we have done is we have uh, excited uh, a dialogue. Um, listen, I want to thank Jasper one more time. Performance and reliability now. That's what Jasper's remanufactured diesel engines provide mile after mile. Jasper's running complete engines are dynamometer tested with horsepower and torque ratings recorded. There's a nationwide warranty included too. So talk about dependable service. Thanks Jasper for supporting the Town Hall Academy and for being with us for all these great weeks. Guys, as we always do, we'll go through a, um, 
you know, a two minute summary. We'll give you each a chance to uh, say a few things. Bill, I'll start with you. Well, I guess the fact that we're independent service providers is probably the best thing that could ever happen on this, on this year. And that is that we get to choose whatever the hell we want to do, you know, and, and, and it's not even set in stone. It's set in mud. We change it next week and we go right back to wherever we, you know, that's the beauty of being an independent. We get to choose that and we can run the same exact businesses on however many days we, we, we choose to do that. That is the, if there's anything that I could leave folks with is that you'll figure it out for yourself. You'll decide just, Hopefully, hopefully we're not figuring this out. And we're having this conversation one day after, after somebody's done this, uh, it, you know, in, in, in 20 miserable years, feeling like he or she is a, a victim. He, they're, they're literally enslaved by this business. That would be the tragedy of it all. And if you feel that way, then no amount of less days are going to solve that. If you're miserable four days, it's not going to solve that. You're right. So that's, that would be where, where I would leave it at. Very good. Tom, I'll let you go next. Thank you, Bill. Well, I might be in a little bit different position than you guys. I hear you talking about rents and leases and new buildings. Um, I've been in this building 40 years. Everything's paid off. I don't have any overhead anymore. I don't have any debt. So I don't have to work that extra day, that extra couple of days to, to pad the bank account for all that. Um, my equipment's paid off. Uh, life is grand for me. I mean, I'm 62 years old. Uh, probably go another 10 years here before I start slowing down. Um, I love it. I love it. Uh, something I just want to touch on, we talked on it first, is, is uh, there's no good techs to hire anymore, or there's very few. you got to steal them away, or you got to have to mentor them. Two years ago, I spent thousands of dollars of ad looking for a tech, any tech. I had flyers on the tool truck, so I was paying the tool guys to give these flyers and techs hands. I gave them $100 spiffs. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I finally hired the guy who was selling me the newspaper ads because he thought he might want to be a technician. And he's probably the best employee I've had in 40 years. He's still with me today and uh, coming right along. He's 45 years old, by the way. He was not a young man. Yeah. Raise your hand if you want to grow up and be like Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, a great, great comment from a great friend, Gary Keyes, who's out there. Should this be the I love Tom Ham episode? <laughs> I love it. By the way, I also love Just Tom. Methodically Hamm. figure stuff out. Tom and, and, yeah. job should be he figures stuff out. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you look at his latest survey, what's the average hours that most techs turn? I think the highest rating was in the 30s. So, uh, you know, my quick take on this is, uh, yes, less days would be great for everybody. It's a stressful business, especially with very complex, complicated cars, especially with having to send your guys to schools and have only two guys on a Saturday and try and do get the work done and piss customers off. So we're doing a lot more training. We need to send guys away for that. Unfortunately, not enough around here. So I think the key is this is we have to in, get a culture going in the youngest people in middle school. That's cool to be a tech, get more of these stupid reality shows to make it look fun and cool. Cause that's what they watch. I don't. And, uh, and then we can all work four day weeks and everybody will be happier. Okay. Uh, by the way, Thank you. could I add one more thing, please? Please, Tom. Sure. Um, something else we've incorporated with our, with our uh, establishment is a training day. Every Tuesday, we knock off work a half hour early. We knock off at 1130. I have a separate facility, our training facility. Um, we have a full kitchen in there. My wife makes lunch for the guys. It's completely optional if they want to do it or not. Nobody's ever said, no, I don't want to do it because she's a really good cook. And we do, you know, everybody's got these boxes of training videos sitting around and nobody ever watches them. This is my way to force feed my guys. We do uh, live webinars if there's something available. Uh, we could possibly even watch, watch Town Hall Academies. Um, but this is my, our time to have our shop meetings and do our training and stay current with everybody. Uh, an, another great, great takeaway from, uh, from Town Hall Academy. Thank you so much. Um, remind me to send you that, uh, that, uh, that check for watching those Town Hall Academies. Thank you very much. By the way, Tom Ham's a great friend of the show. Just go to my website, type in Tom Ham, and just listen to this extremely brilliant, bright, and, uh, and opinionated uh, automotive aftermarket peer of yours. Thank you all so much, Town Hall Academy number 89. Bill Nalu, Ollie Thank Gelfand, and Tom Pipo. Thanks, guys. 